Welcome back to my channel, I'm Michael Cosmos. In this video, we are going to be showing you a few highlights of this property which was featured under Homes Under the Hammer. And in Tyne and Weir, Martel sees nothing wrong with some aspects of this house. I have a really nice view out front and a really nice view out back. What's not to like? In addition to that, I want to give you some tips on how these properties are a great way to get your journey of investing in property started at a less riskier level and also some tips on how you can get those refurb done within a budget and bring it up to a great standard. So before I go any further, let's go to Martel, who's going to give you a bit of an insight into this property on Homes Under the Hammer. Now here's our property. It's a two-bed semi-detached, which came with a guide price of just £10,000. For now, come through as we look at um, you know where we are with the refurb it's very important if you're doing your refurbishment so come and inspect the houses as much as possible so that that way you can speak to your trademen if you are not agreeing on certain things that they are doing or maybe are things that you would have uh, outlined to them to do in a certain way but has been done in a different way and then a reception room which is a really good size Yes, it needs an upgrade, new flooring, a lick of paint. You've got old fashioned heating, you want to take that out, but you also have some central heating installed. You always want to get it checked over though. And then you have a big window. And that's important because of what you can see outside. There's a lot of condensation here. It's only single glazed. So you'd actually want to upgrade to double glazing if your budget allowed. One of the biggest jobs on this project is the windows. We had to change all the windows for this property uh, and you really have to find a way to find get some savings on getting new windows I try to go direct to the supplier and then get our our, our 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 construction guys to fit them because sometimes when you go out there and get a quotation from a supply and fit company the prices could actually be way outside of the budget for the project uh, but for this one we managed to get a good deal uh, and we have changed all the windows and as you can and see you got all the waste from all the other old windows that we had to kind of get rid of and insert new windows right across the house through to the kitchen area and there's so much potential here you've also got a side door as well as your front door yes the units need replaced it needs freshened up i'd think about extending right along the wall so you could get your fridge your dishwasher your washing machine everything you need in you've got a boarded up window which needs to be seen to but then there's a separate area which i love even if you did extend your kitchen along the wall there'd still be plenty of room to have a table and make things feel really sociable yes it needs modernization but in terms of layout this really works none of the builders had told me that there was an issue here with the roof since we were last year i didn't see anything that was wrong but these are the things that are important to just pick up when you do those inspections. You can actually identify problems that no one has told you. The kitchen that we have in front of us, literally, I got, we got this kitchen for about 100 pounds on eBay, 100 pounds. So you don't necessarily have to go and spend top dollar on fixtures and fittings. There's someone out there who's trying to get rid of their kitchen just for the sake of getting rid of it. Nothing is wrong with it. Find a way to kind of save uh, you know, money on material as well as on your fixtures and fittings depending on the type of project you're doing. To the rear of the property, you have an ample-sized back garden which is in need of a good green-fingered touch. But is there room to add an extension? You would have to do your sums to see if going to that effort could bring good returns. We probably have to get it all cleared up so that we can actually start working on this garden um, and uh, clear all the other old waste of what that was there before we bought this house. So. Come along, let's uh, continue this journey of investing in property. Now we're talking for quite a modest house. This is a terrific master bedroom and it's flooded with light on a sunny day like today. Yes, it needs some TLC, but you could make it really special. You've even got some storage space, which is super, put whatever you want in there. And as I'm looking around, I'm struggling to find anything too seriously wrong with this house. And when you consider that guide price of £10,000, get it anywhere close to that, you'd be happy. 
So same thing with this, plastered the ceiling. And then uh, once the painting and deco guys start coming in from next week, we should start getting a better look in terms of uh, what this house will look like. Well, now, four months on and we're back to catch up on the story. you very much. Michael and his trades team have created a modern little haven here. He's used one of his stock kitchens to replace the old one that was here originally. He's even added appliances so the house is ready to move into. And for Michael, it's all about adding those little touches. I think it's something that we do right across uh, the portfolio that we manage. I think we try to find ways to just kind of add a, a little bit more of a decorative element to a house which you're trying to let out. So we tend to have a very neutral palette, but in terms of the lighting fixtures, it's something that we feel is that we can simply add and just add a bit more for wow factor to a standard uh, plain room. So it's a case of bringing in some bling where needed, but not doing jobs that don't really add cosmetic or financial value. To that end, he's retained the separate toilet and bathroom upstairs, but he's put in a new suite. Of course, there was one area that didn't so much require a makeover. It needed to be fixed, and that was the roof. The roof, we more or less had to, you know, uh, address the issue of the small gap that was visible from the loft hatch. Uh, you know, some of these things are very common in houses of this nature. So hence, I wasn't too concerned when we uh, looked at this house, because ultimately it's just sending a workman up on the roof and replacing a tile or maybe just making some minor adjustments. And it wasn't really a significant item uh, on the refurb schedule. It was something that was done within a very short space of time. Phew, that was a relief. Thank goodness the roof wasn't a whole lot worse. However, the central heating system was a whole different ball game. With the central heating system, as you might have noticed, last time you had a back boiler, so that's an old heating system. Uh, so we had to strip that out and install a new boiler for this particular uh, house. Uh, we retained some of the radiator and the, the heating pipework, which was already in place, was in good condition. But otherwise, we had to install a new boiler to meet the current required regulation and standards that we also want to maintain across the, uh, the portfolios. Another way Michael also made the house more energy efficient was to install new double glazed windows throughout. Getting a hold of all the right windows and then installing them was one of the reasons there was a small delay on the project. But did it affect his budget limit of £12,000? We are just slightly just over by, by a few hundred pounds, which is not a significant amount as we always factored that in in our contingency planning. Uh, but ultimately, we, we, are, we are happy with that. You know, we brought it in at the ballpark uh, figure that we were expecting to, uh, to do the refurb on. In addition to the £12,000 spend, Michael also had to pay auction fees totaling nearly 1,500 quid. That means that along with his £41,000 purchase price, he's invested £54,500 into his latest rental vehicle. Through this whole process, I hope you have learned something in terms of how to uh, do up projects like this particular one. Uh, but I want to give you a few extras. First of all, uh, I would encourage you to look at properties which are similar to this type of pro project if you're looking to start. Because when you live in uh, big cities uh, or in high value areas, you might think that starting in property is an insurmountable task because you're looking at the deposit and the prices uh, of, uh, of property around you. But when you you find places like Sunderland or other commuter areas whereby their good fundamentals are in their good family areas but the prices are somewhere below hundred thousand pounds it gives you a low entry point so that you can get started you might have to travel a bit out but at least it reduces the amount you have to put 
honored you to actually get started. So as you got from the numbers for this particular project, 41,000 uh, purchase price, first of all, 41,000, you can't even build a house like this for 41,000, but they are there. But it simply means that now, if you are looking to finance this, you only have to put 25% down. So that means what? You're about you're looking about 10,000 pounds. It brings the level down so that the project for someone who might not have a lot of capital is doable. Yeah, my final point uh, that I can kind of give you in relation to this type of project is that it enables you to do them much more frequently because your amount that you put down is not as great as that you have to put on a big deal. It means that you can do about probably five, six, seven type of projects like this within a year and a year and a half, depending on what's your budget and your income, whereby if you're investing in larger projects, you're only probably doing one project per year. The benefit of actually doing a few projects of this nature on a yearly basis is that if you're looking to be a professional professional investor, if you're looking to hone your skill as an investor, this gives you an opportunity to practice. Just think of any sport, whether it be football or, or golf. Think of David Beckham. You know, do you know how many times he had to kick the ball to learn how to curl it like he did? It means that by the time he actually got to the big match, to the big games, he had already done it a thousand times in practice and he was good at what he does. So really, when you are doing small projects like this, it's almost like that's your practice time. It, it gives you the opportunity to learn because each deal, each transaction, each refer project, you are honing your technique of developing projects and bringing them onto the market and renting them out that in a space of two, three years time, you can go from having no experience to actually having transacted 15, 20, 30 of these type of properties because you don't have to put too much down and you're able to recycle your, your finances and keep on investing and learning and every project will teach you something so that at one point in your career you will get to those big deals and you will be able to be successful at the massive deal because you learn how to do these small deals much more effectively and it's best to start off on this level on this type of deal because if you make a mistake you can correct a 10,000 pounds mistake um, much more easily than you can uh, uh, correct a one million mistake that can happen on a bigger project. So these are the benefits of working on these smaller projects. I hope you got something from that. Go out there, start investing, find a low entry market. You can start investing and start your journey. I want you to click in the link below where I'm going to be covering in a short program how you can identify properties, refurb them, flip them or refinance them and create a passive income stream. Click below and find out more.